Bless you. It's freezing in here. That green thumb. I wish. As you say, this is better. Good. Let's be home by seven. Honey, can you call the landscapers again about the sod? They gotta get moving on that, you know, or we're gonna miss. I'll try them again. Thanks, hon. Thinking in here, um, with the coming out part along the wall. Okay, sure. And I guess come in through there. Not through there. That people are okay. Great. Big push. Four more. Three. found the whole 12 step thing was like just another form of addiction that's exactly that what this book is saying yeah yeah it's about how to own your own life mm. you know because it's like what he's saying is that we don't really own our own lives we're taught what to do what to think but emotionally we're not really in charge yeah but see i think that with the exercise and the diet and Healthy foods. I just think really... he's very good at certain things. Really? Oh, yeah. Have you read him, Carol? No. He's very good on certain things. Emotional maintenance, stress management. You know, Carol, you do not sweat. Oh, I hate you. I know, it's true. <laughs> no, it's great. Did you forget? No, it's inside. I just, uh... Why? Something happened. Come in. How old was he? Five years older. He was the oldest of my mom's kids. He 
it um, wasn't. No. That's what everyone keeps. Not at all. Because he wasn't married. Right. It's just so unreal. You know, I'm suing the contractor. Did I tell you? No. You don't even want to know. Fulvia! I'm home! Mother, what? No, I, I just walked in the door. That's all right. How are you feeling? How's your back? That's good. It's not a bad time, Mother. I just... All right, that's fine. He's fine. They're fine. I will. I will, Mother. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Fulvia! I need to laugh and know while I was gone? Oh my God. No, Mrs. No telephone. Is this what they delivered? Fulvia? We did we did not order black. This is this this is this is not what we ordered. Yes, in, in Sherman Oaks, may I have the number for Nelson's on Riverside, please? I don't believe it. Yeah, thank you. Yes, may I have the shipping or delivery department? Thank you. Mom, Mom, um, soccer practice. Don't forget. I didn't forget last time. Yeah, whatever. It's the bus. I gotta go. It was a mix-up. Okay. Bye. Bye, honey. Fulvia? See? Where's my book? My telephone book? Uh, I, I put it in the uh, bottom shelf. See, because of the cabinet men. Oh, okay, I see. Thanks. <laughs> Fulvia, could I have some milk? Some leche, por favor. To let a critically ill patient die, but you're also saying it is all right to accept that death.
say that. No, I disagree with that. But isn't Elizabeth Bouvier, by starving herself to death, hastening her own death? No, I think that what you're making, what you have to do is draw a distinction between steps that the doctor can take to actively kill someone, give them an injection. So, yeah? Uh, Thank you. You okay, Mrs.? Simply say, look, whatever happens, we're going to withdraw from this situation. It's a terrible thing to say with 30 seconds left, but isn't that a pretty thin line? That you're it's a very thin line, it's right but it's a very right important right. line. It's one thing to remove a piece of machinery, whether it's as big as a respirator or as small as a feeding tube. It's quite another thing to walk in and say, well, we decided this life isn't really worth much anyway, so we're going to help you out the door. And that line does not be She's fine. She's so cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. No, we wanted teal. We ordered teal, but we received black. But your original order shows black. That's impossible because it doesn't go with anything we have. All right. All right. Let me try the Sherman Oaks store upstairs. See what they have in stock. Thank you. If I told you that the end of the world was coming, and if you said to me that you'd get down on your knees and you pray, I'd say you're in trouble. Because when I go to bed and I pull up those covers under my neck, I say, Jesus, I'll see you in the morning. Well, I, I, you do that very well. Thank you. I was raised in the fundamentalist church. Believe me, I heard this all my life. We sang songs about being in God's army. And but I think you've really changed the subject. Uh, I, 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 I see a president who's embattled at the moment, and a, a president who's really based on, and what am I based it on? Uh, not being close to him, but being close to people who are close to him in the press, I should say, and who watch him carefully, as being very pained at the moment. And certainly, um, a man who wants to make his mark, and he's, I've never heard anybody ever say that he's that fundamentalist that he believes that the end is nigh. I really, you and I take a, a different view on that one, but uh, you married to Marjo? <laughs> no. Just you start a little bit the technique. Get, um, I just, I, I, I really believe that uh, he thinks he's doing the Lord's work. to save the trees? Some say it goes deeper than that. Today, environmentalists from all over the globe are adopting a new, more holistic 
approach to their studies, which they call deep ecology. Deep ecology goes beyond the traditional scientific framework to incorporate a greater spiritual awareness of the planet, or as eco-philosopher Parlam Grass puts it, an understanding of the oneness of all life. I have a feeling that we are entering a new time for cell rights, a period started this fruit diet. I've been so out of it since my brother's funeral. Have you ever done one? No. They're supposed to sort of naturally cleanse the body, you know, of all the toxins. You should do it. It's been so run down lately. Really? Yeah, I've just been really busy. We have this plant dinner coming up. Yeah. Right. Maybe you should try it. Well, it would be a lot of fun. We could do it together. Come on. Why don't you just try it? Do you know what you want? Yes. I am going to have the fruit salad and the herbal iced tea. Okay. I'll have the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got one. I, I got one. <laughs> this, this, this beautiful, shapely blonde runs into the emergency room. I want to ask her, what, what's wrong? What's the problem? She says, oh, it's kind of embarrassing, but I was using my vibrator and got stuck. I can't get it out. It's stuck inside. So they rush her into emergency. They admit her. Then they rush her off to the operating room, and they get some specialist to perform the surgery, and, and it's a 10-hour ordeal. And finally, she wakes up the next day, and the specialist walks into her room and says, well, I got some good news and I got some bad news. <laughs> the bad news is we did everything we possibly could. We tried everything, but we just couldn't get the darn thing out. We just couldn't. <laughs> but the good news is we were able to change the batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody doesn't seem to like your jokes, Dad. Carol. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Excuse me, I, I don't... Uh... Mm. 
I'm so sorry, Greg. Just overexerted, I guess. I've never. Maybe the doctor can give you something for it. Outside of a slight rash and congestion. Now I'll uh, I'll give you some ointment and some decongestant, but jeez, uh, I, I I don't know what else to do. Are you? Well, what? I guess I'm just a little stressed out lately. Uh huh. And just tired from it. Well, that's not uncommon. Um, you're not doing drugs, are you? No, I don't take drugs or, or drink or I, I don't even um, like coffee very much. I'm just a total milkaholic, actually. I mean, before the fruit thing. Well, stop the fruit diet. You need protein. And while you're at it, uh, try staying off dairy. Dairy is very hard on your digestion, hard on your intestines. I'll see you in a couple weeks. You'll be fine. Thanks. In the 80s, there are more and more gangs in the Los Angeles Basin, plus many more stabbings and shootings by AK-47s, Uzis, and MAC-10s, killing numerous of innocent people. L.A. was the gang capital of America. Rapes, riots, shooting innocent people, slashing throats, arms and legs being dissected were all common sights in the black ghettos of L.A. Today, black and Chicano gangs are coming into the valleys and mostly white areas more and more. That's why gangs in L.A. are a big American issue. Roy White. Good job, Roar. Why does it have to be so gory? Gory? That's how it really is. God. Hey, hey, hey. You want some coffee? Yeah, I'd love some. So, what did Hubbard have to say? He just said I should uh, slow down a little, you know, stop the fruit diet, eat less dairy. Well, that's exactly what I said, isn't it? I knew that whole fruit thing didn't make any sense. But basically, there's nothing to really worry about aside from being a little run down. Well, that's good. So, Dad, how do you spell Uzi? Just how it sounds, Uzi I. didn't tell me you scheduled a perm. No, uh, I didn't schedule one. I just thought of it now, of trying it. Unless... No, no, there's time, actually. I, I had a cancellation. You still want that manicure? Sure.
nice. Oh. Oh, my God. God. Paul, do you have a Kleenex? You... Oh, my God. Anyway, so, uh, so we meet him for lunch, Cosford, Ted, and I. Who comes in but this kid in shorts? I mean, he looked like he was about Jonas's age. Couldn't believe it. Ted said I looked like I'd seen a ghost. Oh, I like what they do with your hair. It's great. I like it. I'm glad, honey. Yeah. Sexy. Huh? I still have this, um... What? This head thing. Oh, boy. Craig. Hey, Carol, what the hell is going on here? Nothing. Nobody has a fucking headache every night of a fucking week. I must have a touch of something yeah, because I, I, I didn't want to hear about it. I'm sorry. I um. I know it's not normal, but I can't help it. I'm sorry, honey.
great. How the hell are you? Good, good. And you? I'm okay. Have a seat, guys. Well, basically, Carol, you are perfectly healthy. If anything, your condition has slightly improved since your last visit. Now, this is just a suggestion, but uh, you might want to consult someone. And I know a very, very good doctor who's just more suited to stress-related conditions, which I think this is. Psychiatrist? Yeah. I couldn't sleep. The air, the, the smell. to get somewhere. Oh, well, I'll see you at Barbara's Sunday. See you Sunday. Okay, okay, bye. Bye. Working on some designs for our house, though, mm -hmm. in my spare time. And uh, and you have one child. My husband's little boy. Um, he's he's not my son. He's my my stepson, Rory. He's ten. How long have you been feeling unwell? Two months, three, 
Um, I I've been under a lot of stress lately, and and then my friend Linda and I, she she's probably my best friend. She lives down the, um, uh, anyway, uh, we started this fruit diet together. I, I think that sort of set it off. So... Are you uncomfortable? No, I... I just thought... That, I mean... Aren't you supposed to ask more questions? Well, no. We really need to be hearing from you. What's going on in you? See my baby book. It's this disgusting sort of puke oh, orange. That's very appetizing, Barbara. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. Okay, Lynn. My turn. Linda, thank you. Mm, I hope you like it. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh. Did you wrap that yourself? <laughs> oh, God, are you kidding? I wish I were that creative. Well, I've seen you wrap things. Oh, I can't even draw straight while I. Oh, God. I thought it would look great over Chris. Okay, hands up. Who wants decaf? I didn't know you heard it was herbal tea. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're really happy, Gary. Really Real coffee. You must be so happy. Yeah, yeah it looks more yeah. like it. Where did you come in? That is so great. <laughs> oh God, I don't know. We Barbara. Yeah. Hon. I wish you were. There's a crowd room off the entrance hall to your right. Lately. How are you doing? Um, good. Um, uh, I've just been a, look, a little. Look at it, it's you. Oh, yeah. Um, under the weather. Right. Um, look at it, she's a princess. Uh -huh. Oh, that's very good. It's very realistic. Ladies, we are now opening the big present. Please come in. Okay. Here we come. 
And then Elise, let's go home. Look at the big present, okay? Southern California. I saw your notice at the health club near my house and decided to write and tell you a little bit about myself. For some time now, I have not been feeling up to par and was hoping your organization might be of some help. I'm originally from Texas, although I've lived in the LA area most of my life. I had asthma as a child, but it never really got in the way of school or recreation. I've always thought of myself as someone with a pretty normal upbringing and as basically a healthy person, but for the past several months, that has all started to change. Suddenly, I find myself feeling sick. Honey, what's, what's going on? I've been calling you. I thought you were asleep. Someone, um, Brenda, called about trading Thursday carpool for Saturday or something like that. She said you'd know what that was about. Anyway, she said she'd call you back. Um, I thought you were asleep because you weren't. What are you doing? I was writing this, um... God, what is this? What? Where am I? Right now? We're in our house. Greg and Carol's house.
are you? You are of all ages and from all walks of life. But you find you all have one thing in common, strange, never-ending ailments. Suddenly you can't cook dinner anymore because the smell of the gas from your stove makes you ill. Or if you take the freeway, you feel as if you might choke on the fumes. Your family and friends tell you that you're overreacting, that it's all in your head. But your symptoms worsen. Fatigue and depression turn to migraines, blackouts, even seizures. Now, if this sounds familiar, you're not alone. What you most likely are is one of a vastly growing number of people who suffer from environmental illness. That means that for reasons not yet known to us, certain people's natural tolerance to everyday substances is breaking down, usually as a result of some kind of chemical exposure. Today, there are 60,000 chemicals in everyday use, yet only 10% are tested for human toxicity. This is a disease that you catch from your environment. Carol? You scared me. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was just... No, I just took Fulvia down. So what, did you just get home? Yeah. So how'd it go? What? Your thing, this morning. What was it on? Well, it was just this thing on getting sick on fumes and bug sprays and stuff. You mean on, like, pollution? More about people who get sick from chemicals and what it does to you. Who told you to go to this? No, I just... At the health club, I saw a flyer. So, you think this is what's made you, I mean, why you've been sick? Because of bug spray? No, I, I just... I don't know why. So most of the time there's a trigger, new carpeting, new kitchen, new car, somebody works around paint fumes or strong fragrances. Uh, okay, no reaction. Please prepare. Um... Point zero one of two. Right. Then one day, bam, it hits you and suddenly your body is reacting to everything around you like a Geiger counter, food, air, everything. Point zero one of two, milk. Thank you. 
What we're doing now is testing about 50 separate foods and molds to determine what your neutralization doses will consist of. And, um, and then they'll, um, they'll stop it? Uh, no, uh, arm please. No, neutralization provocation is a way to aid you during the cleaning up process, but that's all it really is, is an aid. Okay, this will sting just a little bit. It's milk at point zero one of two. Excuse me. Okay? Eric, Dr. Reynolds, what's up? Right? Right? Well, look, if your oasis and twice a week injections don't simmer you down in winter, you know you have other hidden sensitivities, most likely mold or fungus. So you continue the rare food diet. If you don't get any better, check back with me or have, have Dr. Baines check into an unresolved or uncontrolled candida problem. Dr. Reynolds, she's reacting. Oh, Eric, I gotta leave you. A neutralizing dose at 0 0.01 of three, please. Carol, this will cease momentarily. I apologize for any discomfort. Sarah, be sure to record pulse rate change following injection. Okay, 0 0.01 of three milligrams. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay, we have palpitations of deep distress in conjunction with a racing pulse rate of 104. There's flushing and some wheezing. A bit of swelling in the mouth. This is a big one, Carol. Milk's a biggie. turn it on and off like a switch. We just don't know how to make it go away. The first thing you need to do in order to clear is create an oasis in which to live. Your oasis is your safe place, your toxic free zone where your load has been significantly reduced. For some, that can mean an airtight, porcelain-lined enclosure, something like a refrigerator. For others, their safe room is just a stripped-down room within their house that's uh, conducive to good ventilation or air control. My name is Sarah Pinter. I live in Orange County near a fumigation company, and we're in the process of a suit against the company for improper handling of their chemicals. So. Great. Thank you. Yes. Would you stand, please? My name is Abigail Cartier-Rousseau, and I'm... Mm, my sensitivity originated with fragrances. I was employed for 23 years. Uh -huh. I've been spending some time at the retreat in Renwood, so Good. I'm doing much better. Great. Great. Terrific. Thank you. And you, ma'am? My name's Carol White. This is my husband, Greg. We live in the San Fernando Valley. We're here for my wife, who's been ill, to um, learn more information and hopefully gain from it as well. Thank you. I hope so, too. My doctor thinks I'm nuts. He thinks the whole thing is completely in my head. That's what my husband still thinks. It is in your head. It's in all our heads. What do you mean by that, Helen? It makes you crazy, she's right. Well, it ends up in your head because it's, it affects the neurological, and it will make you depressed. It really will. I mean, how does a five-year-old say it's psychosomatic? How does he make his eyes swell shut? I mean, why would he want to do that? He, he can't go into, into Chunky Cheese anymore. He, he, he can't go into showbiz. Why would he do that to himself? 
it's true. It's like you go into a building, you're like walking along the hall. It's like you don't know when that monster is going to jump out at you. You just like going along the wall like any normal person. All right, with your mask and, and your oxygen tank and, and your bottled water. <laughs> so at first, I didn't understand why it's citrus, since I had tested negative for citrus until all of a sudden I remembered how the oranges had rolled out of their plastic into the bag with Greg's papers in them, because the newspapers, the ink. Really? Also, yeah, that and, um, and you know our couch, our beautiful new couch? Yeah. Totally toxic. Really? Yeah. Wow. I know. So, um, it's hard. Like, I, um, I can't wear makeup anymore. God. It ruins my eyes. I get sick. Well, I guess one good thing is just how it's made you so much more knowledgeable on food and everything. And and chemicals. That's true. They just know so much more about it there, though, the people who go through this. I mean, so so much of it, too, is that we were raised and, and grown in a chemical place. And you go into a grocery store and you, 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 you grab a chemical without reading, without investigating. <coughs> But anyway, it's just made me more aware than I used to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Next up, the load. What is it? Why is it? And what can be done to improve it? First, what is your total load? Well, in the chemical-laden world in which we live, impurities are all around. Everyone must deal with a certain amount of impurities and toxins at any given time. And that's your load. It's the maximum amount of toxins your body can tolerate, which for most people is rather large. But a chemically sensitive person is not able to carry a normal load. What we have to do is unload. This means we go back to zero and starting from scratch, substance by substance, we build the load back up. Remember, the goal is to get clear, and so the safest and quickest way to clear is to fast. Fasting, which can last up to five days depending on the individual, is usually followed by the rotation diet or the rare foods diet, both of which help protect the system while reintroducing foods back into it. Whatever diet you choose, be sure to omit mold antigen-containing foods like bread, cheese, alcohol, ketchup, vinegar, mayonnaise, mustard, coffee, or chocolate. Molds are very hard on the immune system, whether you're EI or not. And throughout your unloading process, be sure to have adjusted your living conditions accordingly. Safe bodies need safe environments in which to live. And there are healthy alternatives that exist for just about every toxic product, gas, or ventilation system out there. But it's up to you to find them.
No medication. Emotional strain. No. Well, can you think of anything else that might be causing? So what you're saying, Carol, is that this is based solely on the pesticide and nothing else. I have a chemical impairment that makes me... I realize that, Carol, but it's just not turning up on the tests. Please don't do that! Nurse, don't spray that here. Thanks. Look, Carol, from a medical standpoint, there's just no way to prove that this thing is an immune system breakdown, much less one based on environmental factors. Now, if your psychiatrist can't provide... I think, honey, I mean, well, what gave you the bloody lip? What would cause you to actually bleed? I don't know. They visit them, pray with them, get them in. It's New York. It would be the same again. Well, things just started tumbling down on top of me. Sir, to ensure your team rain fits. Down, no question. This is going to be a big sales event. It is a real problem, and I think more and more people are becoming aware because more and more people are becoming sick from chemicals. Nestled in the foothills of Albuquerque, the Renwood Center describes itself as a nonprofit communal settlement dedicated to the healing individual. Offering the services of a combined health retreat and community center, Renwood consists of Greg. some 200 residents, visitors, and staff, Greg. many of whom suffer from chemical Listen, sensitivity, including its founder, author Peter Dunning. Environmental illness is just one of a cluster of new immune system disorders such as Epstein-Barr syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, and of course AIDS, all of which continue to elude conventional medicine. At Renwood, we offer an alternative. I like to think of us as a kind of safe haven for troubled times. We're the most extensive cooperative treatment residency of our kind. But what I think makes us really unique okay. is our emphasis on the individual. What? Are these victims of 20th century disease our old from canaries in the coal mine warning us of a disease-ridden future? If so, the Renwood Center is certainly ahead of its time. People come for all different reasons. I guess the thing we all have in common is like why, you know, why did we all get sick to begin with? What's it called? Renwood. Better stop. Go back. You're contagious. 
contaminating this entire area. How much do I owe you? I see you. Are you Carol? Yes. Hi, I'm Susan. I work with Claire. We've spoken on the phone. Hi. We're so glad that you made it. I heard now making a ruckus. I thought it might have been your car. I hope she wasn't too... Uh... Oh, no. She's been having a real rough time lately. Her husband's very sick, and she's just... <laughs> that, that, that's okay. Okay, well, let me help you with your things. Okay. Take this one. Thanks. is a chemical free zone. We have reading boxes, uh, safe TV, and there is a 911 phone in case of any kind of medical emergency. Right. We're sorry to hear that your husband wouldn't be able to join you. Oh, I, I know. He's just in the middle of all this business. They, they should be here soon, though, he and our son. I should call them, actually. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. There's a phone inside the center. Great. We acquired the center in 1978, and we've been battling to keep it ever since. But basically, this is where all group convening takes place. Um, we have all of our workshops and um, our evening talks, that sort of thing here. The dining room is right across the way, on the other side of the street. Oh, hi! Um, you must be Carol. Carol, this is Claire, our director. Hi. Welcome to Renwood. <laughs> How was your trip? Ooh, whoops. Well, I guess you're just wiped out. <laughs> There's nothing more debilitating than travel. Claire was hypersensitive when she first came to Renwood. No, I'm just semi-hypersensitive like the rest of the world. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little um, from the flight. I know. <laughs> We'll just quick get you checked in, and then we'll take you down to your cabin, and you can plop or do whatever till dinner. But I know that there are quite a few people who are anxious to meet you. Thank you. Um, Carol, if you want to leave your bags here and use the pay phones, they are just beyond the chapel, the little auditorium to the right. OK. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, it's me. Hi, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Great. Is it nice? Yeah. Great. That's great, honey. Yeah, you know, we'll see. Did you forget anything? No, I just thought I'd call, tell you I was here and everything. No, I'm glad you called me. We were just about to go out and grab a bite to eat when I heard... Oh, oh, you guys, go ahead. I'm sorry, I just... No. You just relax and take care of yourself, get well quick, and we'll come see you in a couple of weeks. As soon as I reach deadline on this. OK, babe? OK. Love you. I love you too, hon. Say hi to Roar. I will. And um, we'll talk again real soon, OK? OK. Bye-bye, right. sweetie. Bye. Good night. Night.
I want to welcome all newcomers, all short and long-term visitors, and extend our warmest support for the acceleration of your healing process. So that you can relax and receive the full benefit of your stay here, we ask that you observe community wishes in the following ways. Silent meals are observed at breakfast and lunch with a side of the room for men and a side of the room for women. In addition, we ask you to refrain from smoking, drinking, and use of recreational drugs while on the premises. And we ask that you respect our practice of moderation in dress and restraint in sexual interaction. Instead, we ask that you try to focus these feelings inward toward your personal growth and self-realization. End of speech. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, especially our long-termers, Carol and Ward. Yeah. And now, with no further ado, I give you our own Peter Dunning. Hey, Peter. Oh, you like the shirt? Are you familiar with any of his books? No, I don't think oh, so. They are so wonderful. I'll lend you some. Peter is a chemically sensitive person with AIDS, so his perspective is incredibly and vast. My deepest welcome to Carol and Wade. Ward. W Ward. <laughs> welcome to Redwood. <laughs> all right, if you'd all close your eyes, pass your valuables to the front. <laughs> no, no, come on. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> okay. So we're feeling good, huh? We're feeling warmth. We can look into each other's eyes and actually see rejuvenation and personal transformation happening. Why? Because we've left the judgmental behind. <laughs> and with it, the shaming condition that kept us locked up in all the pain. But what I want to share with you tonight, what I want to give you tonight, is an image to reflect on. An image of a world outside as positive and as free as the world we've created here. Because when you look out on the world, from a place of love and a place of forgiveness, what you are seeing outside is a reflection of what you feel within. Does that make sense? So, what do I see outside me? I see the growth of environmentalism, right? <laughs> and holistic study. I see a decline in drugs and promiscuity. I see sensitivity training in the workplace. And the men's movement. And multiculturalism. I see all these positive things outside in the world because what I am seeing is a global transformation identical to the transformation I revel at within. And with that, we are one with the power that created us. We are safe. And all is well in our world. Kind friends all gathered round. There's something I would say. That what brings us together here has blessed us all today. Strangers are as family, and loneliness can't hide. So give yourself to love, if love is what you're after. Open up your hearts to the tears and laughter, and give yourself to love. Give yourself to love.
Carol? I'm sorry. Are you having a reaction? No, no I'm fine. You know something? All these feelings you're having are just fine. They're so natural. I mean, you've just done something so big. You know, something many people never do in their lifetimes. You've taken this big step on your own behalf. You've left behind everything that's known and secure and all the people you love and trust. And you've come to this strange new place with strange new people. It's completely understandable that you might feel lonely or fearful or even angry. <laughs> you know, when I first came here, I couldn't even walk. I'd been living six miles from this chemical factory. This was in Michigan. That was leaking like 15 gallons of chemical byproducts every day. When I got here, all I could do was just sit in my safe room and every day, every hour of every day, I would look at myself in the mirror, and I would say to myself, Claire, I love you. I really love you. At the end of the month, I could leave my room, and shortly thereafter, I was walking. For me, this was a gift. This whole thing was a gift. Because everything got taken away from me. I, I mean, everything in the material world. And what was left was me. better. You'll do fine. Sweet dreams. Seen such a beautiful Dear Greg and Maury. How are you guys? I hope everything is going good. 
I really miss you. I'm feeling a little better, so I decided to stay the full amount. At first, it was hard to get used to, but now I really think it's starting to help. I've been so much more relaxed and eating healthfully, and the desert landscape is really beautiful here. I can't wait till the 25th to show you around and introduce you to everyone. Give my love to Sally and your mother and Linda and be sure and help your dad roar. Love and kisses, Carol. Watching him go by. Why does he? Oh, for Lester, he's just very, very afraid. Afraid to eat, afraid to breathe. But let's talk about you. I heard you weren't feeling so hot. It was just a little um, shortness of breath and some dizziness. I noticed the highway near here, and I wondered if maybe my cabin room was a little downwind or something. I thought that maybe if I tried another cabin... Claire would be the best person for you to speak to about that. Claire is? Yeah, she's really the one. Okay. I remember Claire sharing with me a little while back some concern over you. That you'd been feeling some remorse. Maybe some apprehension. I was just... All I'm saying is that these feelings that you're having, Carol, are extremely common, especially in relation to new environments, and especially for someone who's environmentally ill, okay? And what we're about is trying to help absorb as many of these tensions as we can, so you're free to do the kind of healing that you need to be doing. Does that make any sense? Yes. Because when that's accomplished, I'm I'm doing my job. No, I, I, I know. I'm just still learning, you know, um, the words. Oh, well, the words are just the way to get to what's true. Right? Right. See the coyote? Where? Straight. Is that all right? Sure. I need a partner. Great. Guess we'll have to figure out what to cook. Right. Yeah. All right, well, I'll think about what to cook. Me too. <laughs> She'd keep in there. She, she used to let me open the clasp and look inside the purse and close the clasp. I'll never forget that purse. Okay. Now, speaker number two. 
describe to your friend a room you remember having as a child. Nell's husband. negative, destructive thought we might have, and look around ourselves with love. I tried to teach him this. To give up the rage. My concern is it sounds like a spiraling down. If you're feeling more sensitive to the fumes that way, you shouldn't really be outside. The problem is there just aren't any center accommodations available right now, except for cabins and dormitories. Oh, I'm fine, really. Oh, except for Harry's. Harry's? Mr. Keene, Nell's husband built a safe house. You can see it. It's right next to recycling over there in the little white igloo. He lived in that? Oh, yeah. After his stroke, he needed a more controllable space, so she stayed in the cabin, and he lived in the safe house. And he actually improved. It's ventilated and porcelain lined, and he was perfectly safe as long as no one set foot inside. I don't know what she's planning to do with it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a confession I'd like to make. I've stopped reading the papers. I've stopped watching the news on TV. I've heard the media gloom and doom, and I've seen their fatalistic, negative attitude, and I finally realized, once and for all, I don't need it. And so I transform that negative stimulus into something that will not do harm to me. Because if I really believe that life is that devastating, that destructive, I'm afraid that my immune system will believe it, too. And I can't afford to take that risk. Neither can you. We are one. Darlene had another girl. Oh. 
No calling tonight. And uh, Linda called and said to hurry up and clear or clean or whatever it is. Clear. And come on home. That's sweet. So you really feel like it's still the right choice? I mean... Yeah, I... I do, I mean... Right before the fumes, I was good. My load was up. I was eating well. So... What did they say about the fumes? Just that I'd probably move to another different cabin somewhere. Uh-huh. Where I won't feel them. Right. Okay. I just think it's true what they say, that it's up to the individual and that it takes time. Right. Whose house is that? It's Peter's. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. You like moving? No. husband just passed away. Come on, Rory. Now. Steve, why did you become sick? Um... Well, I became sick because I just OD'd on all the drugs I was doing. Huh. Why did you become addicted? Well, I guess I became addicted to, like, blot out the pain of not liking myself, of hating myself, really. Hmm. It's not hatred. Okay, thanks, Steve. Hello, Joyce. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. Joyce, what do you think was behind your illness? Why did you become sick? I believe uh, that I made myself sick after my son got sick because I was just where you just get so eaten up with guilt, really. Uh, you know, because I felt that I had done it to him. I mean, I was the one who put him in that school. I put him in that environment. You were punishing yourself. Yeah. I was um, deeply wounded as a child and had completely blocked it out for years <laughs> and then uh, suddenly became very ill. Why do you think? Maybe to let myself know something was wrong. <laughs> okay. And? The person who hurt you the most? It was me. For? 
not forgiving him. Okay. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, Carol, would you like to respond? Okay. Okay. We don't want to force anyone. Mel. What? Would you like to take part? What is the question? The question is, why did you become sick? First, I got sick, and my husband thought I was crazy. And then he got sick the same way. What was happening in your life around the time that you first... Uh, how were you feeling when you first got sick? I just wanted to get a gun and blow off the heads of everyone who got me like this. Now, nobody out there made you sick. You know that. The only person who can make you get sick is you, right? Whatever the sickness, if our immune system is damaged, it's because we have allowed it to be through exactly the kind of anger that you're showing us now. Does that make sense? Does anybody have a problem with that? Which is why you need to remember your affirmations and figure out how to love Nell a lot more. And even Nell's disease. And put that gun of yours away. Sometimes. Sometimes all I see is the hatred and frailty. People's cruelty to one another. Cruelty to themselves. And I realize how lucky I am. How blessed. Is that everything? I think so. Rory, be careful with that. It's real heavy. I have it. Rory, don't talk to your mother in that tone of voice. Fine. What time's your flight? 7.20. You know, Rory, if you really want to be helpful, you could go make sure all our stuff's in the car and we're ready to go. Let me get that? I got it. You sure? Oh, watch it. Oops. Okay. All right. I think it might be your cologne. I mean, I'm not wearing any cologne. Uh, maybe in the shirt. I don't know. Well, I guess we better get moving if we're going to catch the plane. It's going to be OK. I'm fine. It's just for a short time. I know. I'll be fine. OK. Come 
hug you? Of course. So this other guy I knew, he didn't know anything was wrong with him either, except that whenever he would go into a mall, he would get totally depressed. Um, you know, start crying really hard and contemplating suicide. And then he would step outside and he would be fine, you know, totally normal. This would happen to him every single time. God. Yeah. You know what they called him? What? Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Formaldehyde. Oh, God. I'm so gullible. No, I'm not. I'm serious. That's what really happened. I always forget if it's pasta, cheese, sauce, cheese, pasta, or pasta, sauce, cheese, pasta, cheese, sauce. I think it's pasta... Pasta, 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 cheese, Stop it. pasta, Stop it. sauce. Suddenly, all I see, all over my hands and my legs, are black, horrible sores all over me, oozing. And at first, I'm horrified, and I'm, and I'm, I'm full of self-pity and anger. I'm enraged until I realize, suddenly I look down again, and I realize that they aren't sores at all, but these black pansies, these sort of <laughs> wilted black pansies that I used to pick when I was a child. So in my dream, I remember that. And, and as I pick up each wilted flower, they would just instantly bloom into beautiful bouquets. Oh. <laughs> Every single one. Ending in rejoice. <laughs> That's remarkable. That's there. extraordinary. <laughs> Incredible lasagna, by the way, guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, great, great dinner. Great. Okay. Thank you. And you know, it almost tasted like the real thing. <laughs> Carol and Chris. Carol and Chris. Carol and Chris. Carol and Chris. Sweet that journals of heavenly light. Never seen such a beautiful sight. See that burn on a heavenly night. I know forever that we'll be together. Never seen such a beautiful sight. See that burn on a almost tomorrow and tomorrow happens to be Carol's birthday <laughs> we have a little surprise for her she's a jolly good fellow she's a jolly good fellow she's a jolly good fellow and so say all of us <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Um, I just want to thank Chris for doing this, and everybody here so much. Um, it just pulled me through a really hard period. 
Anyway, I couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, I just um, <laughs> just that I really hated myself before I came here, and um, so I'm trying to see myself hopefully um, more as I am, more um, more positive, like seeing the pluses. Like I think it's slowly opening up now. People's minds, like um, educating and and AIDS and um, and other types of diseases because, because, and it is a disease because it's out there and we just have to be more aware of it, um, with make people aware of it and um, even ourselves, like uh, going, reading labels and, and going into buildings. Carol. Thank you, Chris, for everything. Are you sure you're all right, Carol? I'm fine, really. Okay. Happy birthday. Thanks. See you tomorrow. For sure. Good night. Night. Thank you. 